All right, we are backstage in Jacksonville, and UFC on ABC has just wrapped up, and Daniel, you just keep saying the same thing. He is so freaking good. We're speaking yeah. about Ilya Taporia. I mean, he's so freaking good. He is good. I mean, honestly, when you watch him in preparation, you recognize the skill. But it was against guys like Bryce Mitchell sure. and Ryan Hall and all these other good fighters. Nobody like Josh Emmett, a guy that has fought for the interim championship, a guy that is as tough and durable as they come, and a guy that possesses so much knockout power. Elite Taporia didn't just win. He dominated in every... Megan, 50 to 42. I don't think I've ever heard that scorecard in my life. I was walking backstage when they were announcing the <laughs> scorecards, and I thought, did I hear that wrong? But it was it There's was no rightfully chance. earned there. You know, he, he that'll looked... Be, that'll be four 10-8 rounds. That's absurd. But he looked tremendous he looked like yeah. a world beater tonight i mean we talked you talked to him in there about no, no, yair sorry. and alex i mean what what do you think how does he look against either one of those three ten eight rounds sorry and then he won the other two but to have that as a decision was absurd but when i think about it and i'm thinking to myself what's next for him i would think max holloway or somebody max has got the korean zombie now i'm okay with him going right into a title fight i think he is that ready this kid showed conditioning over 25 minutes he showed an ability to compete everywhere and he really did just dominate and I think that he matches up relatively well against all of them the technical fight between him and Yair would be crazy but then also to watch him fight the champion Volkanovski with their skill sets fantastic fights across the board at 145 he he also has this characteristic to be calm under pressure like oh. throughout the week you would have thought that he was this seasoned veteran not yeah. somebody who has like about six I believe that was a six UFC fight um he he seemed like he knew exactly what to expect yeah. the confidence was there he didn't expect it to go all five rounds he did tell me that when we spoke yesterday but he has this thought process about him that is like that of a trial tested veteran well he's young he's like 25 years yeah, old 26 he hasn't, yep. or 26 years old he hasn't fought much the, the only thing that you could even take as a negative was he didn't do the fighter meetings because he was cutting weight yeah that's that's literally the only misstep was that he got he had to get his weight down and that's not really a misstep you can't judge him harshly in anything that he did over the course of the first main event week that he's ever had it he's calm he's collected his demeanor outside of the octagon translates so well inside the octagon he's at the high guard he's in there moving sets everything up he wastes nothing yep this dude is just he he really is next level and he is the evolution of mixed martial arts and maybe we get to go to spain when he fights again could you imagine oh my god that would be crazy it's so beautiful over there imagine if I we mean, had a say where we hey, got to go sergio ramos is out there i know i mean come on 60 million Instagram i've never followers. in my life took a picture i was like hey sergio <laughs> could we get a Thank God he knew me, right? Because otherwise I'd be just like a groupie fan asking Sergio <laughs> Ramos for a I think he'd be used to that anyway. That's crazy. Before we move off this main event, um, Daniel, I was sitting next to you at the Octagon, and I wrote something on a paper, and I turned to you, and I said, towel. I was yeah. pretty adamant that I felt like for fighter safety going into that fifth round, knowing Josh Emmett's history with injuries, especially head injuries, I felt like what more is there to prove? But then it came out swinging in Dude. the fifth. Yeah. I mean, what were your thoughts heading into that fifth round? Did you think they could have yes. stopped it, and did you think they were going to? Well, I made a point in the fourth round. Like, sometimes we call for the corner to stop the fight, and they don't, and we're very harsh on them. But Josh Emmett was still showing that desire to fight. Yeah. But by the end of the fourth round, I was like, okay, now we can stop it. You and I had a little bit of a discussion off air. But then Castillo and them look at him, and they tell him what to do. He goes out there like he shot out of a cannon. Mm -hmm. So they made the right decision. And then Josh Emmett fought the fifth round and didn't take much damage because he was so dangerous, Ilya had to wrestle him. Yep. So it was like, I know at times we start to say, hey, this should happen, this should happen. But I think they made the right decision and gave that guy an opportunity, and he still believed he can get it done because of the way he fought round number five. Yeah, well, speaking of decisions, we will see what decision is made with Ilya Taporia and his future, should it be for the title, all depends on what goes down in a couple of weeks in Las Vegas in July. But we got to talk about this co-main event because oh, Daniel yeah. is wearing the product the blood. of some of it. <laughs> Amanda Hebos versus Macy Barber was a bloody one. It yes. was a great battle. And I think it might have been Macy Barber's best performance to date. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I thought she's never looked better. You know, she went to Alpha Male and said that she's never felt more calm, more confident, and she feels like she has grown into the woman that she's going to be. We met Macy Barber as an 18-year-old. Yeah. She was a little girl trying to find her way in this game of mixed martial arts. She's a woman now. She's sure. She's confident. She's got a team that is really helping her develop her skills. She's now won five in a row. And it was like the moment she made Amanda Hebus bleed, 
it was like a shark in the water, and she just went crazy and ultimately got a finish. Yeah, and the maturity level that Macy Barber shows, not just in the octagon with the decision she makes while she was fighting, but also outside. Because I asked her, I said, hey, you went over to Hunter, and I thought she was asking for a title shot, but she was asking for different things about her pay. Yeah. But she said, you know, I said, well, is a title shot next? She said, well, I would like it to be, but if it's not, I'm okay with taking mm -hmm. the steps to get there. And I think that is such a mature approach to have when you do have a performance like that in a division like Women's Flyweight where she is a big name. Yeah, she is. And I think that, again, speaks to her evolution because before, all she could speak about was being the youngest champion yeah. of all time, right? People were like, this little girl's getting ahead of herself. She's annoying. She's this, she's that. <laughs> now she's like, hey, I'll take it as it comes. It just once again proves that this is not the young girl we knew from before. Yep. This is a woman that will work her way into the opportunities that are presented to her. And She's doing a great job. I mean, she's won five in a row. Yeah. And she keeps getting better when she goes into the octagon. She was hunting for a finish. She said she was tired of the decision. She got the finish tonight against a very tough and durable Amanda Hebos. Daniel, before we wrap this up, in a couple of weeks, we'll be back in Las Vegas for International Fight Week. It's always it's almost like the Super Bowl yes. for the UFC. This is a huge card. We've got two titles on the line in featherweight and flyweight division. But when you look at the whole thing for UFC 290, I mean, what makes you most excited? Everything. The entirety <laughs> of the week, right? from UFC X to the fight card, to just being around the fans and surrounded by them. Look, we generally are so busy on fight week, we don't get to go to UFC yeah. X. We don't get to take in the festivities. But this year, me and RC are gonna do our show live from UFC X with the fans. Amazing! So yeah, it's an opportunity for us to get out there and spend time with the people that are allowing us to get and build a show that's very successful now on ESPN2. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the fights. I'm excited about being back in Vegas, right? It has become our yearly tradition to go out there and do what we do as Ilya Taporia walks past us. Hey, Ilya, why don't you come say hi to the people? Come over and say hi, champ. Just one second. Just, hey, also, Ilya's wife is the just most wave, gorgeous just person wave. on the planet. That's Ilya Taporia, guys. We can't keep him. The UFC <laughs> city got to go. Great job, man. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to shine in front of you guys. That was a phenomenal performance, champ. Good luck. Thank, Thank you for stopping in, congrats, man. Congrats. Congrats. Hey, listen, when they tell you, we got to go, we got to go, you make the rules now, I'll tell you. I'm telling you that as the guy that was the champion. You make the rules, Ilya. You still make the rules, yes, Daniel you do. Cormier, but I'm being told because I don't make the rules <laughs> that it is time to wrap. But we cannot wait to see you in Las Vegas in the beginning of July to celebrate. You guys, the fans, and I think those fighters are going to put on a tremendous show at UFC 290. We hope to see you there or at home. But, Daniel, always a pleasure. You're the best. It was so good. Thanks, Megs. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.